GenSpark just released their brand new AI agents and they are absolutely mind blowing. In fact, I think these are the best AI agents that I've come across yet because you could literally get started with it today for free and have it make phone calls on your behalf, make entire presentations and do so much more. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to use this tool and five insane use cases that are gonna blow your mind. Okay, so using GenSpark is actually pretty simple. If you come to GenSpark.ai, you'll be able to register here and they give you free access to get like 500 credits that you can use to test this out. Or if you click into a bunch of these things, you can actually see exactly what it looks like when it does it. So this is just like a typical LLM, but it does atypical work. You could see right here that you could generate videos, you could generate images, you could do deep research, you could have it call somebody for you. Or if you click into all agents right here, it is going to show Show you all the different agents that it has and you can click into these right here and it will actually show you an example of it doing things for example they have a super agent that can basically do a bunch of different things they have a deep research agent they have a call for me agent they have an agentic fact check and they have a data table one which is great at creating data they also have a few other very basic agents right here and one of the things that i actually like about this the most is you could generate things like voiceovers or presentations and a bunch of other things literally just by telling it to do this. In fact, what I would strongly suggest that you do is I would come over here at home and I would say to this agent, this is what I do. These are the tasks that I do. How can you help me begin to automate these things? Because just looking at these five things is barely even scratching the surface of what this thing is able to do. Because it can literally do anything that you ask it. In addition to that, if you come into me right here, this is kind of hard for you to be able to find, but you will be able to see all the different chats that you have here. I wish that they had this in a little bit better of a place because right now it's kind of annoying to have to go in here. And if you come in here to the settings, you can click on settings. You can see that they don't actually have that much here. AI data retention. I would recommend having this on if you want it to be able to use your data in order to give you better responses. Display language, I would just set this as English. And then in addition to that, they have a few other things in here. So like I said, you could see your history right here. You could see different bookmarks. If you bookmark different things that you had this do, and if you come to Spark page right here and click generate, this is basically going to allow you to have an AI writing assistant, which is really, really easy for you to be able to create. So what you would do is put in the subject here. It's going to prompt you with a few other questions. You go in here and fill this out, and now you have a super writing agent. Now, before I show off these insane use cases, I need you to smash that subscribe button if you wanna stay up to date on the latest and greatest AI tools. I literally upload videos like this every single day to keep you up to date on the latest changes in AI. In addition to that, I just launched AI Automation School. If you wanna learn how to automate your work with AI or make money with AI, check it out at the pinned comment below. Now use case number one is using their call for me agent. I don't know about you, I hate calling people, I hate making dinner reservations, I hate just having to do very tedious things like this, but I don't have to anymore when you use something like GenSpark. So this is the prompt, book a table for two at 6 p.m. next Wednesday, prefer a table by the window, need some preparation for a birthday celebration. Again, this goes through, it actually thinks through all of this, and then it clicks right here and it actually goes through and does the phone call. We could see the transcript right here, or we could listen to this or just read the summary. Check this out. Thank you for calling Lake Home. For current hours of operations, press zero. For reservation inquiries or to speak with a host, press one. To speak with a manager or chef, press two. To repeat this menu, press pound. As we could see from there, we could come back over here and we could see that it actually clicked a button at this point. It then got transferred to a host and we'll skip over to what that actually looks like. Thanks for calling the show. How can I help you? Could I reserve a table for two on Wednesday? Um, as in next Wednesday or today Wednesday? Next Wednesday, please. That's crazy. And it actually goes through and gets the table reservation. It confirms the date. It confirms the time. And it also confirmed right here the exact request for a window table couldn't be fulfilled. But the host is going to try to put them towards the front of the restaurant, which is closer to the windows. And this 
is crazy. Now I want you to think through all the different use cases you could use that for because you don't have to use it just to call a restaurant. Maybe you have phone call leads and you wanted to call it to warm those leads up or to remind them that they have an appointment or remind them of something. That is going to be a crazy use case and it's going to save you a bunch of time. In addition to that, this is use case number two, which is can you create me a presentation that explains how the YouTube algorithm works? Please be as specific as possible. Use a lot of analogies and metaphors. I want each section to be as visually appealing as humanly possible. So this goes through and actually begins doing searches for things. One error that I noticed here is it typed in YouTube algorithm 2024, which again, I would just be able to then say, hey, you did this the wrong way, please use 2025. But nevertheless, it actually goes through a bunch of stuff. It goes through a bunch of images. And then this down here actually went ahead and created this. And then it goes through and actually highlights all of the different things that it created here. But check this out. This is the PowerPoint that this made. I asked Gemini to do the same exact thing and it gave me a terrible presentation. But this right here is an absolutely amazing presentation with a ton of different detail with over 20 different slides. In fact, let me come over to Gemini and see if I can see what Gemini created also. I have a few different accounts in here, so it's gonna take me a second just to look for this. Boom, boom, boom. It's not this. If we come over to this account, maybe it's under this one, but it's mind blowing the difference between these two things, which was kind of disappointing to me because I have been absolutely loving Gemini. So if we come over here, this is what Gemini made me. Look at how horrible this is. This actually didn't do what I wanted it to do. There's a bunch of mistakes in here. The coloring on this is just absolutely horrible. But if we come back over to GenSpark over here, wherever I had this open, this is nuts. Like this is way more professional. This is actually a professional presentation that I would be able to send somebody. And again, Think about this. You could use this as a presentation for school. You could use this as a pitch deck for work. You could use this to create a report for work. There's so many different use cases here that are just mind blowing. Now use case number three is going to be creating voiceovers with this. In fact, this right here really blew my mind because it's not one of the use cases that they have advertised or anything like that. I actually found this by giving it my information, telling it what I do, and it actually spit back a few different use cases. So we could see here, can you create a voiceover for the story? Basically it asks three questions, which is a good sign of any LLM or any agent when it wants specific feedback so that it actually gives you a better answer. So. Could you please share the story text that you like to convert to a voiceover? Do you have any specific requirements, i.e. gender, accent, tone, emotion? Is this for a particular purpose? So I said, you choose, here is this story. So basically I wanted to choose number one and number two, just because I wanted to test this out. Now, if we come down here, we'll see, okay, I'm happy to do that, literally. In a few seconds, this went through and created the voiceover for this using 11 Labs. Now, I want you to think about all the different use cases that you could use this for after we listen to this. I didn't mean to create a frog cult. I named the first one Cletus after a guy my dad used to buy pills from. Now that's crazy because it actually does the pauses the right way, the voice sounds good, and if we wanted to, we would be able to adjust this. Now you could use this for voiceovers for content. You could use this for voiceovers for pretty much anything, which is crazy because you could even clone somebody's voice or create somebody's voice. And I didn't know that you could actually do this within this. And this is one of those use cases that I think is going to be incredibly helpful if you were doing anything where you ever need a voiceover for something. For example, you could do an audiobook or you could even go on Fiverr or a website like that, get audiobook contracts or get voiceover contracts and then do them with this. Now, the next use case that I really love this for or is for doing things like fact checking. So if you come back to the agents again, you will see that they have a fact checked agent. So if we click on this over here, we could see I actually use the fact check agent for this. So Coca-Cola cut ties with Taylor Swift over her political endorsement. Now we could see here that this goes through and actually verifies this. And the way that it verifies this is pretty cool. It does some verification research. It does more research. It does more research. And basically it's cross-checking a bunch of different sources in order to see whether or not this is actually going to be accurate. And then it goes through and actually shows you what those different sources are. And it gives you the answer for whether or not this is true. And as we can see right here, this is false. It gives you a summary of the findings, a background of the partnership, when the partnership actually ended, the origin of the false claim, which is pretty crazy, Taylor Swift's endorsement here, current approach to brand partnerships, and a conclusion. 
This is going to be super helpful for fact-checking things that other AI sources give you, or just for fact-checking things that you might have heard on X or heard on YouTube or heard on TikTok or Instagram or anywhere else. And it's nice to not just get a true or false, but also to get a background with all the sources cited of where it actually originated from and the truth behind things that are happening. Now, the final use case that I have for this is something that I always recommend that you do, which is that you actually ask whatever tool you're using, can you give me a list of unique things that you can do that are very helpful? Now, I did this for the everyday person so I could come up with a few of the use cases that I shared with you in this video that weren't abundantly obvious when I was just going through GenSpark, but you need to do this for your specific situation. Do it for your situation, give it your role, give it the things that you do, give it the tasks that you do, try a few different from prompts like this and this is going to give you some pretty insane things like for example this is how i found out that it could create a professional presentation which it made way better than gemini or it's how i found out that we could do things like make phone calls or do things like generate background music and sound effects and then that had me think hmm Maybe it can actually create a voiceover also, and it was able to. And as you can see, there are tons of other things that it could do here. We could ask this now for a list of 25 things, or 50 things, or 100 things, or make it more specific. And this is how you should be using almost every AI tool. Now, like I was sharing earlier, I just launched AI Automation School, and you could go to the pinned comment below to check it out right now. If you wanna learn how to automate your work, you wanna be able to make more money with AI, or you just wanna stay up to date and be in a community that is gonna keep you up to date on the latest and greatest AI tools and a bunch of different use cases for them, I'd strongly suggest that you check it out. Because right now, we have special launch pricing, and the price is gonna be increasing soon, so if you wanna lock it in at that low rate, go to that pinned comment below. Otherwise, I'd strongly suggest that you check out this video Right here that walks you through how to use Google Firebase, which is essentially going to allow you to create apps with a single prompt. I'll see you over there.